It's a weird thing to try and describe, like the need to make art, because some of the stuff I make isn't pretty, and some of it isn't like all happy and shiny. Um, but it's that need to put your hands on something and to create an image of what you've seen or how you feel. The one thing in all the stories is about looking for magic and not forgetting to look for the wonder and the simple things in life. Um, there's a lot of times that we get really busy. You know, when we forget to look at the magic of, you know, a bird and a stick or how a folded airplane could be something you could ride, a stick could be a dragon. And I think in my work, I try and bring that out. I, I show you both sides of the coin. In a moment, I was watching some film and then it, it was funny. It was something my mom would laugh at. And so I started laughing, but I thought of my mom and she'd passed. And then I started crying. And it was that idea that that line between like intense joy and intense sadness is so thin that, I mean, you know, you could cut yourself on it. I think the reason each of my sculptures has so many layers in it is because we're like that. And at the same moment that you can be happy, you can also be sad. For me, it's about having your hands in the work. It's about being able to touch it and get around a piece. My, my biggest love is to be, you know, wax under your fingernails and clay and a little bit of paint here or there, but to feel the material and feel you, you, you bringing something from nothing. Artists were the storytellers of our time. Artists have told where people fit in. Artists have shown you religion, artists have shown you wars, artists have shown you great joy, artists have shown you great depth and, and terrible deaths. And I think each one is, I think in a way, you're the, you're, you pass on that history for your time. So I've met children, you know, that are just in awe of what you do and not like, oh, you're amazing, but just like, like the message you're putting out into the world is being picked up and it's being received and it's being processed by that next generation who you hope will make a difference. She's been a fan favorite and I think again it's that accessibility. Um, a lot of kids have really loved her work and I've given a number of tours and everyone has been drawn to her pieces. In fact they tell me I understand it, I understand it which is an interesting thing because they maybe don't understand everything that I think Holly might be saying, but they understand it for them. We need a hero. In this piece, the little boy is actually from a photograph I took of my son. I get really um, protective as a mom now, looking at all the stuff that's coming at our kids in the world. I did some research and the bombs that are white have a yellow ring. The yellow is highly explosive, but then the blue ones represent dum-dum bombs. From a mother's perspective, trying to take care of her kid, you can't tell what's a dum-dum and what's a highly explosive because they're all coming at your child. So the little boy is on this paper airplane and his chest is puffed up and he's gonna be the hero and protect us because we put our kids in that role where they're now going to be the next generation that saves us. And so the little airplanes are all the messages from the little boy going out into the world. And all the ones that are kind of burnt up are messages that may never make it. You know, so they're, di they're dying as they go out. But there are some messages that will make it farther out. Um, and so it's called We Need a Hero because it's that idea of, you know, we need somebody to protect us, but we need to be protecting our kids at the same time. And this piece right here is a view from within under the skin. So my kids and I, we moved from Oklahoma City to Mustang. And um, when we moved to Mustang, we had to have four boxes of crayons. And so as we're sorting, um, my kids started talking about their old school. But when they did, I was like, well, I don't remember that little girl. And they're like, oh, well, she had yellow hair, you know, or he might have brown skin. But they never once said, hey, you know, it's the Hispanic kid or it's the Asian girl. And I thought, you know, thinking of all the stuff that's happening in our world, if we could be like our kids, then we would be better people. The idea is if you looked at yourself as every color under the rainbow, you know, all these different races, we would be kinder because we'd realize that if you thought of them under the skin, we're not different. And so it's 12 girls and then there are a full box of crayons. And so it's 24 colors. Bloodline, so I'm Native American, I'm Delaware and Cherokee. 
I knew my history. But after I had my son, I realized I really wanted to preserve my history. I had to put him on the Cherokee rolls, and while we were doing it, I was also getting information from my mom and talking to her about our history. And what I found interesting is in the records that she had, it would list family members. What I thought was beautiful is that there were children who died, a miscarriage, they were still counted. Though I only have two children, I actually was pregnant five times. And though they were lost, they still counted. And so if you come up and you see there's different figures, there's just a real subtle, their head is bowed and there's no detail, they're dipped in wax. And for each one of those, it represents a child that didn't survive, they still counted. You know, they were still a soul. And then the shadows for me are really as important as the piece, because for me the shadows represent the idea of time and memory. And in time, your memories shift and what you remember about a person or about a place has changed and everyone's perspective of a thing is different because it's your memory, it's your history. In the faces, I use my own face, I use my kids' faces, I use emotions I see them have. I've grabbed photos you know, of them running around or playing, or I'll have an idea and then I'll ask them and then I'll take pictures of them doing things. And that way, though it's based in my head of something I may have thought of or seen, I actually have like real life references to try and get all the complex emotions that you see in their face.